Honestly, I was going to come up here and I was going to rage against what we know as the globalized economy, how it's fractured culture, societies, and at the end of the day, will complete another cycle, in my opinion, my husband's opinion, and many of us, that it will complete the cycle of another civilization collapsing under its own weight and hubris. That's what I believe. <laughs> But Jay already said all of that beautifully. So I'm going to talk just a minute about how we got here and another segment of the economy. I'm 68 years old. I'm from the United States, I think you can tell. My grandparents, World War I, and then my parents, World War II, lived in a world of uncertainty. That's what tremendous war brings every time we have one. My generation, 1960s, early 70s, we enjoyed all of the benefits of having parents coming out of World War II, and we were generally, by any comparison, spoiled rotten, and we were worried about the Vietnam War, which we're happy to say we stopped. And we worried about civil rights. We worried about feminism. We worried about the peace movement, anti-nuclear. And in that time, we didn't actually see the dark horizon out there, which now, in the last third of our lives, we begin to see what is the globalized economy making money, risking everything for personal gain. You can say it's for corporations, you can say however you want to cut it, but finally it is the individual who needs to benefit from the activities that convert nature to production every single day. So my husband started the company called The North Face, sold that, then started a spree with his former wife, Susie, eventually sold that and said, I'm tired of making stuff that nobody needs. At the same time, after 23 years, having begun Patagonia with Yvonne, I decided I wanted to do something different with my life. And together, we decided to come down here in the Southern Cone and begin to see if we could change the end of the story even a little bit about the extinction crisis that's taking place. So we all, if we know what's going on and we don't like what's going on, each one of us has different skills, you have different personalities, You're some, are, some are shy, some are bossy, some do their homework and understand the real root causes of why this is taking place and why do humans insist on making this mistake every single time and sully our own nests to the point of collapse. All of you have taken up your charge by establishing B Corps in your new or existing businesses and whatever else you're doing. Which brings, ah, I wanted to ask you a favor. I've been listening for the last couple of hours about the goals of B Corp. And it says, I can't do it by memory, but something like this. The business should be conducted as if people and places matter. And I just want to say, I think you should change that to say, conduct business as if all life matters. Because if you don't put wildness in there, if you don't put wild places, if you don't put rivers, if you don't name it, people will not think about it. Think about pumas extracted out of southern Patagonia over the last 80 years. It, name a species, any species. Most of them, almost all, are in the doghouse. So please, as we evolve as B Corp, Wherever it is, 
Say it out loud that wildness matters. The non-human world matters. It's implied, but you'll be surprised when it comes up as one of your list of, of goals for business is to protect wild nature. Okay, enough on that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> I think we should just <laughs> talk. Um, oh, I do have something else to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I lost the thread. After we have been fortunate enough to create 13 new national parks between Chile and Argentina, just over 13 million acres, and a rewilding program that includes jaguars, tapirs, giant anteaters, some of, some of the people here have been partners in all of this. We have come to see and have used the power of conservation as a motor for economic development. Now some of this, if you go to Botswana, if you go to Kenya, Tanzania, you see this in action. But here in Chile, we decided it was never enough to create the parks and, and bring back the species who are missing. If we have known for a long time, if you don't connect communities to these national parks, if the people living next to them don't see benefits from these parks that are direct, meaningful, and have legs, 200 years from now, 100 years from now, those parks will be at risk. And so will those communities. And we care about both. So this year, as somebody I think mentioned, we donated the last million acres that we have here in Chile. And the government put up an additional 9 million to create the biggest conservation deal in history, 10.3 million acres. Five new national parks, three... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what happens after the donation? Do we donate it and walk away? No, because this is new. This is the new one of the new economies that conservation, having jaguars that you might be able to see, having pumas, having nyandus, having guanacos, and we got a lot of those now, matter. They matter to people who come into the parks because why do they come to the parks? They do because beauty as an ethic is beginning to take hold, but what they really are coming for is culture, local culture, and wildlife. So, we make the donations, we were working with the government closely, and we've created two new entities over the la just during this year. One is called Ruta de los Parques, we're going to show you a little clip on this because this, for us, is a new economy, along with everything else that you guys are working on. This, is be, this will be one of the great economic drivers of countries like Chile. A lot of you are from Latin America, so you mostly come from countries who have tremendous beauty, tremendous richness that does not need to be plowed up Put in, put in some industrial machine and made into something else. That the nature of nature has value. It is a driver. Secondly, how do you get a society revved up about their own national parks? They own the national parks. When I walk through the front door of Yellowstone National Park, I'm thinking, that's my park. I own that. Keep your dirty hands off my park. This is going to happen in Chile. It's going to happen all over the place. But you have to give it a nudge. So we started what we call Amigos de los Parques, which, by the way, if you go onto the website and say amigosdelosparques.org, 
Sign up and become amigos of the National Parks of Chile. All you Chileans out there. Well, anyone. So, I want to show you why we think that along with all the other businesses who are changing the face of this rapacious global economy, this is going to be right up there with the best. Take it away. Ruta de los Parques de la Patagonia Chilena. 17 parques nacionales. 2,800 kilómetros de belleza escénica. Refugio de especies en peligro de extinción y hogar de más de 60 comunidades amantes de su cultura y tradiciones. La Ruta de los Parques de la Patagonia concentra un tercio del territorio de Chile, integrando tres regiones desde Puerto Montt a Cabo de Hornos, los lagos Aysén y Magallanes. Uniendo la carretera austral, los canales patagónicos y la ruta del fin del mundo. Protege 11,5 millones de hectáreas bajo la categoría de Parque Nacional. Ruta de los Parques de la Patagonia, una oportunidad de desarrollo económico local basado en el turismo como consecuencia de la conservación. La ruta escénica más bella del mundo ya existe y está en Chile. Recórrela, descúbrela y protégela. de los parques de la Patagonia, patrimonio protegido de todos los chilenos.